Good evening, everybody, and welcome. We're so glad that you've been able to join us here tonight for the Plan Rooms webinar about the BIM training program that's being developed. Um, I wanted to start out by thanking our partners and our speakers who are on the call this evening. Um, first of all, Donovan Taylor, who is the plan room manager, is going to be presenting and talking about the plan room and how the BIM program fits into the, the overall work that the plan room is doing. Um, Aaron Daly from KPFF Consulting Engineers. Uh, they have been fantastic partners in getting all of this pulled together, both from the perspective of um, determining what the curriculum should look like and thinking about hiring partners and job placements for program graduates. Um, and we also have Ms. Janicia C. from Louisville Central Community Center. Uh, and she is joining us to, um, to talk about their role in helping applicants to get access to the program, as well as preparing for the program uh, in terms of the computer literacy course, which some of you may have seen on the website is going to be a, a, a prerequisite, sort of a, a pre-course training that will be available. Um, so just to get a little bit of housekeeping out of the way, um, we are on a Zoom for this virtual event. So that means that you all as attendees are in listen only mode for this event. So please make sure you type any questions that you might have into the chat or into the Q&A. And we do have uh, quite a bit of time in our agenda this evening um, to be able to answer those questions. Um, so we'll be tracking them throughout and we'll ask them to the panelists uh, when, when we have that time come up in our agenda. Um, so if you, we don't get to your question this evening, please don't worry. Uh, we will definitely be compiling all of the questions that come in and releasing a frequently asked questions document along with the slides and the recording of the video for this evening's webinar. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass the floor over to Mr. Donovan Taylor. He is the plan room manager, as I mentioned, and he comes to this position with uh, over 15 years of experience in legal business and community organizing and community economic development roles. So we are so fortunate to have him on board at One West leading the plan room initiative. Thank you so much for being here tonight and I'll pass it over to Donovan. Uh, I think you're on mute, Donovan. Thanks again, Emily. And thanks again, good evening, everyone for coming out and joining us today uh, to the plan room, as well as to introduce an uh, introduction to the BIM program. So if you would like to start our slides for us. And the next slide, please. BIM is, a, is building information modeling, which is what it stands for, is, is an intelligent 3D based modeling program that gives architects, engineers, and construction professionals tools to more effectively plan, design, construct, and manage buildings and infrastructure. The BIM certification program that we're sponsoring out of the plan room is a combined 14 week program, as you heard from, from Emily, that offers computer literacy and, and an industry recognized Autodesk certified user certification, offering our candidates opportunities for new career opportunities at no cost. Our target candidates are just individuals who are interested in new computer technology, gaming, 3D modeling, design, and just simply embarking upon a new career that's gonna be lifelong and learning. Uh, the objective overall and how it really taps into the plan room is to increase diversity in the fields of architect, design, and engineering fields. Uh, as in, many inter, industry experts would say, that uh, in, when it comes to diversity in those particular fields, it has been stagnant since the 70s. And so this is just a real innovative and unique way to begin to find uh, ways to get candidates into this particular area of construction. So before we go too far into our presentation, I did wanna start with a brief poll. Um, we're going to ask you all about your knowledge and experience with BIM before and after the webinar to see if you've been able to uh, get some good information out of this evening's presentation. So Donovan, I apologize for interrupting there, but uh, no I just problem. wanted to quickly uh, launch the poll so that our attendees can, um, can see, um, you know, we can let you all know after the webinar uh, what the outcomes were from this evening's presentation. So if you don't see the poll and if you're joining on a mobile device, you might need to check in the drop-down menu to be able to view and respond to the poll. Uh, 
we'll have this up for about uh, two minutes and then we'll go ahead and close the poll. And I do apologize, I uh, intended to do that before Donovan had his great first slide, which introduced exactly what BIM is. So <laughs> hopefully some of you have, have now heard of it before, even if you hadn't before. <laughs> And if you're just joining us, uh, we're, we're currently in the process of our, our pre-webinar poll. Uh, just to let you know, the entire webinar is being recorded and we will make that recording along with the slides that are being presented available to all attendees after the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, just go ahead and type those questions into the Q&A or the chat and we'll make sure that the panelists get to your questions uh, when the uh, when the question and answer session comes up. So I'm just going to give it about 30 more seconds. Almost everyone has voted, but we have a few more who are getting their answers in. Last chance, guys, just about five more seconds. Go ahead and hit submit if you've entered your poll responses. Thank you very much. So now we'll get back to the presentation. Thank you all for allowing that brief uh, interruption. <laughs> and you're back, Donovan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, and we'll back to the plan room. The plan room is a business accelerator created and designed to enhance technical capacities and networks, mentorship, advocacy, and growth opportunities for Black and minority-owned businesses in the construction industry. The plan room was established in response to the needs and ex expressed from our local businesses, owners, and entrepreneurs, mainly those who participated in our One West Young Entrepreneurs Committee. Uh, that's, and that was a, a committee that we, we host through the One West organization. Uh, which I was a board member and chairperson of the, of the committee. And definitely pre-COVID, we met on a monthly basis in which we convened up to 40 local entrepreneurs and, and business owners in the West End community uh, and just convene on what, what will be their needs and strategies on enhancing their businesses and their, their growth opportunities. And through that, many of the participants were within the construction field, either through real estate or commercial. And we found the way that the plan room will be a pivotal way and a very unique and innovative way to <clears throat> upscale these businesses, <clears throat> excuse me, and enhance the, their, their capacities to really improve their, their business and just an overall the economy of West Louisville and the region at large. Next slide. The plan room is a dedicated space for individuals to have, have training, uh, workshops, uh, connections with mentors, bidding opportunities, uh, shared equipment and resources uh, for our, our minority contractors and clients. Uh, we would have a computer lab there with 3D software. We have co-working spaces to connect with our various partners and mentors, uh, as, as well as flex space for some of our clients. And we also have a uh, 3D format printer for blueprinting uh, that was donated to us by Lynn Imaging that, that will be a great resource for our, our small uh, contractors that didn't normally have access to that type of, of information that we, we greatly assist them in their estimating and bidding process to gain greater projects. Next slide, please. And we would like to meet the plan room team. Uh, again, my name is Donovan Taylor. I, I serve as the manager. I have been a strong advocate uh, for West Louisville. I'm a native of West Louisville. Uh, I'm a graduate of Florida a University School of Business and Industry, where I've gained much of my business knowledge, and I went on to gain my uh, law degree at the University of Kentucky College of Law, and I've practiced uh, mainly with uh, Williams and Associates, uh, doing very complex federal and uh, civil rights law, but I, and I think that background will make me very useful in some business and technical assistance for our clients. We will also have on staff Mr. John Hilliard which is a construction manager, he, and he will give the construction technical assistance to our candidates uh, to improve and upscale their business. 
Uh, def and the uh, plan room is under the uh, One West Business Development uh, Division, which is headed by Ms. Emily Dixon and under her great leadership. And we've also like to uh, thank, be thankful of our intern, Shane Pang from U of L. He is kind of our technical expert and keep us the mechanics rolling for us at the plan room. Thank you. Next slide, please, Emily. And we also our technical assistance is overall just really enhanced. It's been real strategic and uh, just on point and intentional on building our capacity, uh, building a strong professional network to give our businesses that services they need to get their internal needs are going and operated on a quality level. Uh, it, it, one of the main needs for our local and small businesses has been banking and capital access. So we'll be a great assistance on that particular level uh, and certification and licensing. Our construction manager will, will help on our construct on the construction management equipment and technology because it varies based on each field and just keeping our, our candidates in the industry ahead of that, uh, as well as estimated and bidding opportunities and really being uh, just knowledgeable of how that process really works and how they can effectively use it. Uh, as, as a goal, the plan room would not be able to uh, move forward and be a true resource to our our community without being very collaborative in, 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 in our efforts. And so definitely we look at intentional of bringing a strong mentorship network of our retired uh, professionals in the construction industry and our seasoned professionals and uh, in the industry that will, we will connect with our, our, our candidates. Uh, we will have a strong network with professionals and businesses within the industry to get that internal knowledge that our candidates need to kind of succeed further. And we're in the professional network, you know, that we'll be building up, as well as other other resources and conne and connections that we can make to really enhance our our clients. Next slide, please. The overall goal and objective of the outcome of the plan room is have a stronger contractor resource pipeline and network for our Black and minority contractors, entrepreneurship and sustainability resources for our contractors. Small and MB contractor growth and job creation will be what, what a key component of, of the plan room. Encourage joint ventures and partnerships to enhance the growth opportunities for our, our, our candidates and increase participation in local and regional construction market. And overall, we, you know, as we want to, you know, just well, if we're having the idea of wealth building is to increase the income and revenue growth for our business clients. Next slide, slide please. And the great work of the plan room, again, would not go without our, our great partners and their roles. We have our institutional partners our, our, that have been working with us, which include, include the Kentucky Cabinet of Economic Development, uh, the Kentucky Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Uh, when, when it comes to our curriculum and, and program development, we're working with uh, the 7 p.m. group and the University of Louisville College of Business and the Minority Contractors Association of Kentucky. And when it comes to the BIM program, we are just so, so, so thankful for our partners of KPFF, LCCC, and the uh, Interact Foundation and Pinnacle Series that donated the software. Next. And so at this point, we will go ahead and I will pass it on to our Mr. Aaron Daly from KPFF, who is kind of managing and kind of uh, coordinating our BIM program. And we are, thank you so much. To Thank you, Donovan. It's been great working with you to this point, and we're all just super excited to see where this goes. Um, like Donovan said, BIM is building information modeling. Um, this is a role that a lot of architecture and engineering firms have in their office. Um, it's not all just licensed engineers. There are a lot of staff that support that. And so th this idea kind of grew out of um, noticing that many architect and engineering firms are shipping this service off, whether it's to other states outside of Kentucky or even other countries. Um, and we all kind of came together and thought, why can't we keep this local um, and kind of grow talent organically? And the best uh, partner to do that is One West. They're already heavily involved in the community. It's a recognizable name. And it was just really a, a great match uh, to make this happen. Um, so we're super excited to be able to give back to the community in this way and hopefully uh, meet some great people in the process. Um, our next slide is gonna be a short intro video. Uh, this video is also available on YouTube so you guys can reference it later, share it with whoever you think is appropriate, uh, but we hope it provides a little more information for you all.
Advanced computer programs allow building design professionals to model their work in 3D more accurately every day. These types of programs are called Building Information Modeling, or BIM. In order to help satisfy the demand for BIM professionals, One West is teaming up with local engineering firm KPFF and several other partners to create a training institute for members of the West End communities. The BIM training program of the One West Plan Room will provide people with applicable skills and supply a locally grown talent pipeline to the area's already top-notch architecture, engineering, and construction companies. As Louisville continues to grow, especially in the healthcare, technology, and hospitality sectors, the graduates of this program will have an opportunity to be involved in shaping the city's skyline. All right, so we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. So we talked about BIM standing for Building Information Modeling. Um, that's still a, you know, a kind of new term for a lot of people. And so essentially what it is, is a 3D version of the blueprints. A lot of people think of, you know, you design a building, there are contractors and people in hard hats out on site with these big drawings that they're rolling out and looking at to build their building. Those drawings still exist, but the way they're created is through computers in a 3D sense. And so they're actually modeling the walls and the roof, and you kind of start to see this building take shape on your screen. Um, these, like I said, uh, these roles are common in architecture, engineering, and construction, that is AEC. Um, so both the people who design it and the people who actually build it in the field are all using this program. Uh, and the program is called Autodesk Revit. Um, it's super common in the industry and we want to actually um, give people the skills that they can use in the private sector. One great thing about this program is it's very smart in that it can count materials. So if you build a building in Autodesk Revit, you can then make it count the windows for you or make it count how many doorknobs are going into that building or something. And you don't have to manually go through these pieces of paper and count it yourself. And so you can imagine um, that carried through the whole building process makes a lot of things faster for contractors. And that's why this program is in such high demand. Next slide. To get into the specifics of this program, we're gonna start everybody off with a four week computer literacy program. This is gonna provide a really solid baseline uh, skill level through the Windows interface, um, some of the online platforms that are in use today in the AEC industry and some other just uh, basic skills that are a requirement to use Autodesk Revit. Um, after that four week program, we're gonna transition to a 10 week BIM course. And there we're gonna actually get into the Revit program and learn everything from how to draw a simple line to how to model a full building uh, from the ground up. Um, like I said, this is a, a zero to 60 course. It's targeted for beginners. And so if you've never you know, dealt with BIM or buildings before, that's totally fine. That's why we did the poll at the beginning. We want people of all levels. Um, maybe you have had a little experience and that's great too. Um, we are gonna have in-person learning on Mondays and Wednesdays. It's gonna be in the late afternoon, early evening. And that just gives us a chance to really get together and collaborate as we learn. In between those in-person sessions are gonna be some independent assignments. Um, you know, we, we don't wanna call them homework. It's gonna be independent study um, just to kind of further your education. It's not gonna be an assignment that you're graded on or anything like that. It might be some extra videos, um, some extra exercises you can do on your own to really um, hammer home what we learned in class. Um, in between your assignments and the, uh, you know, the, the in-person learning, we're gonna have some guest speakers, some potential employers, a lot of touch points within the industry to really give you a sense of what a day in the life would be as a BIM modeler. Um, and at the end of the program, we are gonna have everyone sit for a Revit certified user exam. And this is just a well-known industry credential that lends some uh, real credibility behind your name. And it shows off the work that you've done for these 14 weeks. This is gonna be a challenging program and you're gonna learn a lot and we want you to have something to show for that. Um, so that test, all of the exam prep and fees, and logistics of setting that up is also gonna be included in this. 
And after that, um, that's kind of wraps up KPFF's involvement of this. Uh, like Donovan said, we've kind of put together a curriculum. So I'm gonna be working on kind of the technical side of things. Um, LCCC is gonna work on that com computer literacy program as well as some wraparound services. So I wanna hand it over to Janicia and she can take it from here. Thanks, Aaron. Um, and hello, everyone. Um, my name is Johnny C.O.C. I'm the Adult Services Manager at Louisville Center Community Center. Um, and I'm really thrilled um, and honored to be um, a partner with this initiative with One West in the plan room, um, as well as the other partners. Um, like Aaron said, um, this is going to be a great program as far as getting you all into um, the computer training and then going on um, into the BIM program. Um, so we'll go ahead and move along in the presentation. So our role is to really get you all um, trained um, with the basic computer um, skills. Um, we really wanna help you all build the foundation that you all will need to be successful within the BIM program. Um, we know that everyone is coming in at different levels. Um, we know that you may have had some um, computer uh, literacy experience in other programs. Um, you might be an expert, but um, we just wanna make sure that everyone, um, like I said, gets those uh, foundational skills in order to build um, and be ready for that BIM program. Um, so this is going to be a four week program um, refresher course. This is going to be beginning on May 31st. Um, it's going to be two days a week on Monday and Wednesdays um, for a total of eight sessions um, for the four week training. This will be done virtually via Zoom. Um, so you will have the opportunity to uh, be in self paced um, in virtual learning environment. Um, we'll go ahead and move right along um, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about what you'll be learning um, as far as our, co our course components. Um, so in the first part of the course, we're really going to be focusing on um, the fundamentals um, of learning. So uh, using the different applications, um, understanding the basic roles um, and responsibilities of the software, the hardware, and, and all of the operating systems. Um, we'll then take a dive into um, gaining practice um, using some of the key applications. So uh, Microsoft Office, uh, the basics of Excel, um, spreadsheets, Outlook. Um, in Windows 10 interface, as Aaron mentioned, um, we'll go in to do a little bit of understanding of just internet basics, making sure that you understand um, the different security aspects um, of it. Um, and then we will shift um, the last part of the training focused on uh, the clinical series. Um, so this will be an introductory to uh, the platform used in um, the AEC industries um, that they'll be focusing on during the BIM curriculum. So you'll get an overview um, of how that um, platform will work as well as any other training um, series that you'll be using throughout the BIM program. Um, we'll also provide different uh, supportive services. So like I said, we are here um, to get you um, to be successful within the BIM program. Um, so we'll be focusing on um, any way that we can do that um, to make sure that you all are um, successful. Um, so if you all are not as energized as I am about this program, um, we're going to give you tons of different ways that you all can connect and make sure that you are applied um, and ready to go for this computer uh, literacy training, as well as getting ready for that BIM training. And I will pass it back over to Ms. Emily um, to kind of give you all ways that you can do that. Thank you, Ms. Janicia. Um, so, oh. <laughs> If you're ready to get started and find out a little bit more about the BIM program and apply to see if you're, uh, you're a good fit for this particular program, you can visit theplanroom.org. And there's a section on theplanroom.org that says BIM classes. And at that link, you can find the application. Now the application deadline is on Sunday, May 2nd. And the computer training course itself begins on May 31st. I know we mentioned that. And then the 10-week the BIM portion of the course will start in the month of June and go through September. So we hope that you are as excited as we are about this new and innovative program. And uh, we will certainly make sure that you all have um, a copy of these slides, as well as the links for the application form and a little bit more information online in case you're interested in, in learning more. Uh, so before we go too much further with our, our information, uh, we wanted to go ahead and take some questions from the audience, which um, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. You've been very active in the chat and in the question and answer. So we'll go ahead and, and take a few audience questions. Um, the first question that came in, um, I think Aaron would probably be uh, the best suited to answer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
bring you up on screen here with me. Um, somebody was asking Aaron, what are the average pay rates for professionals with this credential who have a Autodesk certified user certification? Yeah, that's a really great question. And obviously you wanna be able to kind of plan out what this career would mean for you. Um, obviously it's gonna vary because so many people do, so many different companies hire uh, this role, everything from a private design firm to somebody like General Electric or you know, UPS could even use these modelers. Um, but I would say you know, at the low end, it's probably around $15 an hour up to the low 20s at the high end. And that's just starting. From there, it, it can really go based on you know, how much you're able to learn on the job and kind of develop yourself. Fantastic. And can you tell us a little more, Aaron, about what a career path would, this is uh, just a little question of interest, not from the audience, but what would a career path look like for somebody? So say they come into a, a company at this entry level position, uh, where could somebody go from there? Yeah, absolutely. So you come in and you're, you're kind of doing very introductory um, tasks. I mean, you're, you're getting basic red lines, we call them, which is where an engineer or an architect kind of draws something already on a piece of paper, and then you put it in the computer. Um, it's, it's very basic, very straightforward. As you kind of get experience with that, you can move on to maybe you don't need as much direction and you can actually go to a, an existing building and, and kind of take your own measurements and model it. Or somebody could just describe a building to you, say, you know, it's, it's got concrete here and wood there and you're able to do that on your own. Um, all the while you're getting faster at it, you're understanding buildings more and you're increasing your value to the company that you're working for, which means a higher salary. Um, eventually you're, you know, later in your career, you're kind of leading a team of modelers. And so, you know, you're looking back and the, the guy that just started, you were there, you know, 12, 15 years ago. And it, it's really inspiring where you can then kind of turn around and train people uh, to do what, what you started doing. Um, so, you know, a BIM manager or, you know, some of these companies have one or two people that leads the whole BIM strategy for the entire organization. Uh, so there's definitely a, a full you know, career path there. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I think the next question may also uh, pertain to you, Aaron. So um, we have a, an attendee this evening who has a trucking and dispatching business, and she wanted to know whether this course could be of use for her in that, uh, in that regard, or if this is really primarily used in the construction field. Yeah, so I'll confess that... Um, I don't really know enough about the trucking and shipping to see where it would fit in. Uh, my initial reaction is that uh, there's probably not much modeling and drawing going on there, uh, but this is really just to produce um, essentially, you know, pieces of paper and images on a screen to look the way you want them. Um, you could, you know, use this for graphic design or, you know, to lay out trucking routes on a map or something like that. Um, I could definitely see that being extrapolated, but um, you know, I'd have to learn a little bit more about the industry first. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would say the, the primary application of it seems to be in the construction and design related industries like architecture, engineering and construction. Is that correct? Yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay. In the conventional sense, Revit is to, to make buildings and structures. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of the sort of uh, simple questions that have come in. So somebody was asking, where is the plan room located? So our facility is at 1815 West Broadway. So it's right along several major bus lines. It's very easy to get to and has free parking available right next to the building itself. Um, because of COVID-19 and our social distancing requirements, we do ask that you schedule an appointment with our team before showing up at the door. Um, if you do, we won't turn you away, but, uh, but we will probably ask you to schedule an appointment with us just so we can make sure that uh, everything is safe and secure for everybody using the plan room. Uh, so in order to do that, in order to contact our team, you can check out theplanroom.org, theplanroom.org. I'll drop that into the chat as well or you can email Donovan Taylor uh, at dtaylor at onewest.org. And you can schedule an appointment either through the website or by connecting with Donovan uh, and we can get you started. Uh, now, in order to access the BIM program, you don't necessarily have to um, start by connecting through Donovan. That application form is also available at theplanroom.org, as we mentioned. So feel free to go ahead and reach out to apply for this program without setting up an initial meeting, if you would like. We also had somebody asking um, 
what uh, qualifications and skills are needed to join the BIM training program. Ms. Genesia, would you be able to speak to that a little bit? Yes, so during um, the initial intake process, we will be administering um, an assessment tool to see where you are um, as far as your skill set. Um, since this is um, open for beginners, we really want everyone um, to feel empowered to apply, um, take that assessment, see where you fall at um, as far as your skill set, and then as you take the computer literacy course, we're gonna give you the skills that you need in order to prepare uh, for the BIM training. So um, if you're thinking that you may not qualify or you think that you may not have the skills, apply anyway, because we're gonna get you ready um, and get you the tools that you need for success um, during that initial four week training. Fantastic. And uh, this one, I think I can uh, field this next question, but how much does the BIM training cost? The BIM training program is free for anyone who is uh, who's accepted through the application process. So you will not have to pay in order to join the BIM training cohort. Um, and I do have another question that I think you could uh, probably answer, Ms. Genesia. So with the computer training that's happening ahead of BIM, is that more of a rudimentary training or is it a, an intermediate training? In other words, what level does this start at? And I can bring up your your slide here as well as you're answering. So this is gonna start at uh, most likely intermediate. Um, so we're gonna take anyone coming in, um, like I said, at the beginner level, um, but it's gonna start right at um, intermediate. So um, we'll want, of course, as you take that assessment for folks to kind of already have an understanding of one, you know, turning on the computer, learning how to get to several different um, basic applications, um, but you don't have to necessarily be I'm an expert um, level to in order to get involved in the computer literacy training. Okay. So really, if somebody has, uh, you know, if they if they maybe use their computer mostly for email and Facebook, mm -hmm. um, they would be eligible to join the computer literacy course uh, even prior to uh, gaining some of these additional skills that are going to be focused on in the training. Is that right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Excellent. Um. So another question which might pertain to you, Erin, so I'll bring you back up over here. Um, can you let us know if this is a program that can be used for landscaping purposes? Yes, absolutely. And I'll um, actually, a personal story is I'm using Revit right now to model my own yard. I'm <laughs> laying out a garden and trying to figure out what goes where. I've modeled the sun, where, where the sun comes in so you can see what's in shadow. And it's, it's going great. So absolutely, both landscaping and landscape architecture, um, it would both be super relevant. Okay, wonderful. Okay. And I, I know that it's used both for interior building systems as well as the exteriors of the buildings themselves. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, another question for you, Erin. What are some examples of high demand jobs with this credential? What are people getting into? Right. So, I mean, in, in my own firm in KPFF, we've seen a need. We're a national firm. We have 20 offices um, and there are a lot of jobs that go through there. And so structural BIM modeler is what we look for. Um, that's laying out the columns and the beams and, you know, all this, the steel structure and wood structure that you see before it gets covered up. Um, techs, on the other hand, are modeling things like wall finishes and kitchens and furniture. Uh, doors and windows, all the stuff that, you know, you see, and it looks really pretty, um, you know, that, so it's really, it's a BIM modeler, a, a CAD drafter, you, you might see some of those terms. Um, that's when you work in kind of the design side. On the construction side, a lot of times, you know, estimators, they're called takeoff managers, stuff like that. They are using a model that was created by designers and navigating that model to get some of those quantities I mentioned. So, you know, how many windows do I have to buy? Um, well, here's what we do. You know, we, we do a few uh, commands in Revit and we get that number. Um, so th those are probably the most common ones, I would say. Okay. And do you have an idea of who some of the major employers are who need people with BIM training? Not, I mean, there, there are so many. I, I'd say that, um, you know, we're working on that to bring in partners to potentially place people with employers. Um, there's, there's more info to come there. Excellent. That was actually another one of the questions. So will there be a hiring event or an opportunity to interview with employers built into the program? 
Um, yes, yeah, so we're, we're hoping that potential employers will be involved before the end of the program so they can kind of um, see how all of the candidates develop and get to know them on an almost personal level besides just, you know, seeing someone for one interview at the end. Um, you know, we're, we're in that 10 week program, we're hoping to bring that group in around week five. Um, so you've got a little over a month to kind of connect people and, and find your best fit within the industry. Okay. I think that's a great way to do it. So you're meeting with the, the potential employers before you're just thrown out on the job market. You kind of have that your connection and support throughout the program. Right. It's a, a month long interview, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question that um, I think Donovan might be able to speak to a bit. So I'm going to spotlight you here. Um, Donovan, can you speak to why it's important for more minorities and women to get this kind of training? Uh, I, absolutely. I think for, for one, you know, just having a more diverse engineering, uh, architecture and construction uh, in, in that particular areas is just will just be beneficial. You just bring it, you, 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 you could be just a brand new, innovative, unique talent for that particular field. And so, and then it's a, a growth opportunity, you know, that will be beneficial for family and community to have individuals in those particular jobs within our community. So overall, it will just be beneficial to our community and the local economy to have individuals and uh, to increase in, in these particular fields. Okay, thank you. Um, we did have a question as well from somebody who is asking, um, they're really interested in this program, but with their current job, they might not be able to make that Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, 4 to 6 p.m. schedule work. Um, is this a, a one-time class or is it something that's going to be offered again in the future? Donovan? Uh, I think you're on mute. No, this is a class that we'll be offering in the future uh, and definitely after this cohort and if we have a definitely successful response to this cohort, we definitely will be pushing this opportunity again. So uh, I know this will be something that we will be pushing to increase diversity in that particular area of, of construction. And I would say as we learn from this, um, you know, that this is our first uh, unveiling of the class. As we learn from, from it and we all get more comfortable, there may be virtual options or some more independent options. Uh, going forward to accommodate schedules. Okay. Let's see. We have a, a question about um, whether there's a version that they could use to sample the BIM product. Do you know anything about that, Aaron? Right now, there's probably not one that you can download personally and just play with. Um, it is a very expensive program if you have it, you know, in in a private business. Um, so the way they give licenses for education is in a very official controlled way. Um, however, there are a lot of tutorial videos and introductory videos on Revit. So if you go to YouTube and type in Autodesk Revit introduction or something, uh, you'll be able to watch it and they're doing everything on screen. So you can kind of get a sense of how the program works. Okay, fantastic. And uh, just so you know, some of the images that you saw in the little teaser video that we showed earlier, those are actually examples of the, the Autodesk Revit software being used live. So um, in addition to the much more robust world that is YouTube, we just wanted to give you all a little brief teaser of what the program looks like. Um, will having a Mac computer work for this program? Yes, so uh, there will be physical computers at the plan room. Um, that will have the Revit program housed on there. Anything independent is all going to be online. Um, so that's what Pinnacle Series is. Donovan mentioned their really generous donation. That is a completely online platform, and you'll be you know, watching videos and doing exercises through that. So as long as you have an internet browser, um, that, that's pretty much the only requirement for the technology outside of the plan room. Fantastic. And uh, Ms. Genesia, can you speak a little bit to um, the support that Louisville Central Community Center is going to be providing um, along those lines in terms of technology access and, um, you know, for, for those who may not have a computer in their home, um, how can they participate in this course? Absolutely. So we actually have a learning lab um, at our location as well. Um, so if you are in uh, doing the four-week training course, if you're not able to connect 
um, virtually on your own, you are able to come into our learning lab and connect that way in our uh, learning lab. Um, we can also work um, in order to get you some type of device or equipment that you would need um, in order to get through um, that first part of the training. Um, so part of that, um, well, like I said, we're going to be doing um, tons of assessments to kind of see where everyone is um, and to make sure that we're addressing any kind of barriers that might come up um, along the way. Okay, excellent. And we're um, so glad to have you all partnering in that role. <laughs> I'll jump in super quick because I have been corrected. It's a lifelong learning, right? It's a great, great thing. Um, somebody did just mention there's a 30 day free trial of Revit that it looks like anybody can download. So um, I, I have not done it. I don't know the information about it, but you might be able to just go to the Autodesk site or Google you know, Revit free trial or something like that and uh, play around with it yourself before the program. Fantastic. Uh, Aaron, while I have you up on the screen, we actually are getting a lot of questions about BIM and the, the technology itself. Um, how does BIM support construction project cost estimating? It's a good question. And that's all in those quantities. So you would be, everything is, um, it lives in BIM as an element. And so, you know, before, if you were drawing something, it's just a line on a page and really no more than that. Um, but within Revit, something is a, a wood stud or a steel beam that is a certain size. And it corresponds directly to something that you can go to Home Depot and buy. And so, mm -hmm it's a light fixture or a doorknob or something like that, it's a physical object within the program. Um, and so you can do a count of those physical objects and then you just look up the price and it's simple multiplication. And you do that with every aspect of a building and it gets you pretty close. Okay. And so if you've done that count of the elements within the program and you're looking to go out to a supplier like Lowe's or Home Depot, is there any kind of direct link or connection to help designers or development clients be able to budget their project costs on a preliminary basis? Yes, absolutely. There's, there's all kinds of takeoffs. And again, so I'm on the design side, not as much of the construction side, but I do know the construction professionals and developers use that all the time that they're asking for our model, we can share the file with them and then they just get to work and, and they've got a really close number probably within 10, 15% of the actual design cost for new construction. So the software links directly with material suppliers like Lowe's or Home Depot, or they pull that information out and then take it to the store? Um, it, it would not directly link in that direction. It wouldn't go from Revit to Lowe's, but what a lot of material suppliers have started doing now is making Revit families that can go the other way up the chain. Mm. If I call Lowe's and I am looking for a certain kitchen sink um, and it's by, you know, whatever brand Kohler or something, um, a lot of times Kohler will have already made that in Revit and I download that little package file. I put that in my Revit model and then it will, you know, automatically fill in all of that information. Well, that sounds like a really uh, modern way to do things, doesn't it? You, you see what exactly size and shape your materials are going to be and then you drop them in to uh, connect them in with the rest of the elements within the the design that you're building. Okay. Um, so Donovan, I have a quick question for you here. Um, somebody was asking if they've already completed the application form, do they still need to schedule an appointment with you to, to get started in the BIM class? Oh, no, you don't have to schedule a, an appointment with me to get started in the BIM class. Okay, okay. So what can people schedule an appointment with you for Donovan? If you are an existing business in the construction field in the city of Louisville and definitely in the West End, you we're definitely that's our target for the plan room uh, when it comes to our services. Uh, and, you know, the BIM program is one of our only programs that's really targeted for individuals uh, in the construction field. Okay. So what if somebody's not in the construction field? Can they still join the BIM cohort? Well, I, absolutely. We, that, well, if you're not in the church, you could definitely be a sponsor <laughs> of the plan for we, we are a nonprofit. And so we, we definitely need funding to, to be sustainable. So you definitely can be a sponsor. Uh, if you uh, know anyone who's like within the be a mentor, but if you have, if you another a service that you can provide for our clients at the plan room, if you are as a, a professional, a service professional in the community, in the industry of law, marketing, accounting, finance, banking, uh, those services that our clients would need to upscale their business. And so definitely we would like to connect with those individuals in the community. And so we definitely would encourage you guys to reach out to us. 
So from the plan room perspective, for the, the majority of services provided, it's for those in the construction industry. Um, Ms. Genesia, can you tell us a little bit about the target candidate for the BIM program? Who are you guys looking to onboard into this? Uh, the, of course, the first step is the four-week computer literacy training. Uh, what would that target um, I'd, individual look like for this course? Um, definitely someone that is um, very eager, very career driven, um, really interested in um, technology as far as um, 3D, if you're into gaming, um, if you're really that person um, that's interested in, in doing anything uh, like that, then we, we want you to apply and want you to get into this program. Um, anyone that's interested in furthering um, any entrepreneurial opportunities that they have, if they have any businesses that they're interested in, we're lo really looking for those like-minded folks that are ready um, and willing to learn um, and, and take a take a great opportunity. So, excellent. So, uh, for for somebody who is already in the construction field, how could a small minority-owned construction company benefit from this training? I, I can take that one. Um, I think that uh, it's again, it's those takeoffs. I think that bids right now. There are a lot of projects that, um, you know, you go into it and, and bids might be all over the place. And, you know, it, a lot of times um, projects are low bid wins and to get it, you've got to really be competitive and be as specific as you can um, with your numbers and amounts. And so, you know, if you're measuring things on a plan, but maybe it's a weird print or, you know, your scale is not matching up quite right. Um, you could be 10% off and then 10% high on the bid and lose the job. And so being able to do that uh, using Revit in a very precise um, and smart way uh, is going to really tighten up your estimating numbers. Okay, perfect. Yeah, estimating is uh, <laughs> always fun, <laughs> isn't it? It's an art. For sure. <laughs> um, can we identify any Black leaders who are already working in the BIM space? Do you know of anyone who uh, either owns a firm or is working in this space who's Black or African-American? Yeah, so um, one firm, they're based out of Cincinnati, uh, but they, they post a lot. They're great to follow. Um, they're always posting on LinkedIn and Facebook, um, and I would encourage anybody to kind of follow and keep tabs on them is Moody Nolan, uh, Jonathan. Mm. Um, he is the owner, uh, the leader of the firm. I believe his dad started it. Um, and so it's second generation at this point. And then I think uh, his brother is in the construction industry or, or an engineer or something kind of related to architecture as well. So Moody Nolan's an architecture firm um, and, and they are doing a lot to give back to the community in terms of increasing diversity efforts. Um, That's fantastic. Well, actually, I, I don't know um, of any specifically, uh, that, that doesn't mean there aren't any. Um, I just think that that really speaks to Donovan's point of the need to increase the uh, amount of that here. Absolutely. And I, I think that's a big part of why there are so many people interested in this initiative, because as we look around the architecture, engineering, and construction fields, um, uh, there's not the the diversity that we see when we look across the rest of our city. So a big part of this program is to provide an alternative path into those fields without having the requirement for a four-year architecture engineering degree. Now, obviously there are some positions in architecture and engineering firms, and Erin, you can probably speak better to this than I can as I'm neither an architect nor an engineer, but there are some positions that do require those um, you know, more costly and time intensive degrees. Um, but there, there are other roles within the same companies that allow for a certification like this to, to lead you to a great career path. And if, if Emily, if I just might add, I think would just be beneficial. This just can, can be a gateway opportunity for the for individuals. That, you know that you can. This could be the gateway for you get into the industry, and you can begin to gain those academic credentials thereafter. Absolutely. Or even multi generations. I mean, something mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of people I think don't have the familiarity with what those design degrees actually entail. Um, and for someone to be a, a modeler and then, you know, their, their children can now have an entrance into um, engineering school and stuff like that. It really has a lot of ripple effect. Okay. Uh, how will this project connect with other Black-led service organizations to reach more African-Americans? Uh, if if I, I can add to that, I, you know, 
partnership and being collaborative is just what we need, what, what is kind of the main uh, catalyst behind the plan room. And so definitely we will be, we, def we already have uh, some partners here on, on the call with us. And we have the Louisville Central Community Center who has been a great partner and has been a great service to our community. Uh, we definitely, individuals will be uh, referring individuals to the Urban League who are looking to, for individuals who is looking to gain skills to get into the construction construction field, looking to work with uh, the goodwill that's coming to West, West Louisville and, and their employment efforts uh, with the plan room. So it's tied into all the, all the community groups in the community. I am I'm a strong community advocate and my effort is really to connect and be collaborative with the, with the neighborhoods to get the information out and the resources out to the community. So this will be a truly collaborative effort. And uh, if, I, if I could add one thing, the, um, you know, we mentioned that this program was free. Um, it's, it's not entirely true in the sense that afterwards we really are going to um, request that anybody who's gone through it uh, be able to turn around and give back uh, to the next group going through that class. So, uh, you know, once you graduate from the program, you're not off the hook. Donovan's going to come and ask <laughs> you to come and speak and teach and, and anything you can do to, you know, go back and help others to help mentor the next cohort and let them know what this program has, uh, has done in your life. Absolutely. Um, so let me see, I think we, I think we may have covered most of the question. Oh, here's one. Um, if somebody is chosen for the computer literacy program, uh, and I'll, I'll, put everybody up here on the screen so that <laughs> we can all just answer. Um, if somebody is chosen for the computer literacy program, um, are they automatically entered into the BIM program or is that a different group? So our intention with that is to, uh, it, it can be yes and no. We don't wanna commit anyone to something that um, we learn is a not a good fit either way. Um, and so we're gonna, you know, allow people into the computer literacy program, and it will provide that baseline level of skill. Um, but if it's something that, you know, is a learning opportunity and somebody doesn't want to continue on with the 10 weeks, that's totally fine. Um, but at the same time, I think, uh, you know, Donovan or Jonisha, you might know for sure, but um, if somebody is in the computer literacy program and, and they do feel like it was, it was successful, then the next step is just kind of naturally to get them into that 10 week. Yeah, so I'll just echo um, the, the same things that you that you said. Um, there will be kind of a process of how we do that. So we want everyone to come in, like I said, gain those skills, gain those fundamentals that they need to kind of move on um, for the BIM uh, training. Um, it is going to be very competitive as we look to see uh, those that will uh, get to move on and move forward within the BIM program. Um, but we'll work, um, I guess, as a collaborative team to discuss um, how that process will be. Um, but I don't want that to discourage anyone from joining. Um, it's even more um, initiative to work harder um, within the program and get ready for this BIM um, because it is a great opportunity. So uh, we want everyone to come in um, enthusiastic, ready to work hard um, and really set their um, sights towards getting into the BIM program and really um, taking advantage of that opportunity. Fantastic. Thank you, Ms. Genesia. So uh, I've see we're close to the end of our program. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our second poll of the evening, which is, uh, you'll, <laughs> you'll see it looks a little bit familiar. Uh, again, if you're joining us on a mobile device tonight, you might have to go down to the drop down menu to get the, the poll to show up. Uh, but we just wanted to see if anything has changed over the course of our uh, program tonight, whether anybody has changed their mind about whether they're interested or not, whether you've uh, become a little bit more familiar with the BIM program. And while we're uh, going through that poll, I'm going to go ahead and ask one uh, final question. Uh, Ms. Genesia, what kind of support services are going to be offered for program participants? So they're going to be different um, supportive services. Any um, body coming into the computer literacy um, course will have access to our adult services program, um, where we focus on economic mobility. So anything that supports them um, with financial goals, um, financial coaching, um, you might want to uh, 
preview up your resume. You might want to um, develop any other type of skills that you might need um, to be successful. Um, so they'll have full access to all of the programmings and services that we offer with the adult services program at LCCC. Okay. Uh, and I guess we do still have time for another quick question here. Um, so what if somebody's not accepted in this first cohort of the program, would they still be eligible for a later cohort if they're, if it's somebody who's applied and has completed the application process? What, what's the next steps if somebody doesn't get into this first group? I would take that. I would just, I definitely, would, I think that will be encourage individuals who does who do not make it in the first cohort and who will be interested in uh, uh, being participated in the second cohort. Uh, definitely to, to apply and participate and probably probably target those individuals since you have that uh, interest already. And one of the things that, um, you know, in, in creating this, we did poll a lot of industry partners in the AEC field, and we got a lot of feedback of other cohorts. So it might not be them, but it might be another training that people are really uh, asking for in the industry. Um, so, you know, that this could be a re revolving basis where we do, you know, BIM and two or three other topics and then wrap back around to BIM. Um, we're just, we constantly want to match the needs of the industry so that people have relevant skills upon the completion of the programs. Yeah, and there are quite a few industries that use this type of software. So you're really opening yourself up to a great set of opportunities. So I don't see any other questions from the audience. Of course, if you still have questions, just reach out to us. Uh, if you go to theplanroom.org, there's a contact us form just at the bottom. Or if you've already got connections with Louisville Central Community Center or with KPFF Consulting Engineers or OneWest, you can reach out to anybody on our teams. Uh, we can make sure you get some responses to those questions. Um, so just a reminder to go ahead and complete that poll while we're wrapping up here and then we'll end the polling in just a moment. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining us this evening. I especially want to thank our fantastic speakers and presenters. I think we got a lot of good information tonight, both about the program, about the career fields that this leads to, and about the, the BIM training itself and how all of the partners are involved. Uh, so I wanna thank you for, for taking your time to present this information this evening to our audience and for, for making sure that uh, there's a good comprehensive set of information available. Um, just as a reminder, we will be sharing both the recording and the slides from this evening's presentation. So you can look forward to, um, to receiving an email with links to all of that in case you uh, know somebody who was interested but didn't happen to, to make our call yes. this evening. I need you talking to your friends. And um, and I wanted to thank you as well for, um, for taking your time as, as one of our participants and, and listening to this great webinar and uh, hearing all of our speakers talk about what's, what's coming up. Uh, so hopefully we will hear from as many of you as are interested. I see we've got quite a few people who are looking forward to applying for the program. So we hope to hear from all of you before May 2nd. Uh, when the application deadline comes up. And just one last reminder, you can visit theplanroom.org. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the BIM class and you can reach the application form there. Um, if you attended the webinar this evening, we'll also be sending around an email with that link, but just to make sure that everybody knows how to access it on your own. Uh, and finally, I wanna give a, a quick shout out to a few of our sponsors who are directly involved with the BIM program itself. Um, so KPFF Consulting Engineers, who uh, we have on the line this evening, they're actually a, a financial sponsor, as well as all of the hard work their team is putting into developing this great program. Uh, and Eagle Point Software, which uh, is the, the company that created the Pinnacle Series uh, curriculum delivery system, they have uh, donated some licenses for their program to be able to deliver this great curriculum with a lot of video tutorials and all of the materials that will be being used by the um, the <laughs> by the professor, the, the teacher who's going to be facilitating this course. So once again, thank you all for joining us. We're right at seven o'clock. So we, uh, we got you out on time. You can go have a great dinner. And thank you. We hope you have a great evening. <laughs>